Friday edition, Studio 12, Will Johnson, Matt Simon with you. We're looking forward to an 11 a.m. tilt at Kyle Field tomorrow. Texas A&M and UTSA. And you re- what's your early morning routine? You ready? It's the breakfast taco. It's the tomorrow. breakfast taco edition of Studio 12. Yeah, breakfast tacos at the tailgate, wherever you can find them. Yeah, that's, uh, they're going to be breakfast tacos. I like the early games because I ain't got to deal with traffic getting to the stadium. Mm. You guys, you got, you all have that fancy police escort. Yeah. That's true. We, we go on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, t- I tell you what I do like, your preparedness, Matt, because you got the red shirt on because we're in a red zone today. Yeah, yeah. That's very nicely done. I'm going to pretend like I planned that. Very I, fitting. Yeah. <laughs> For me, I just wore Aggie stuff. That's he brought the red shirt. I brought the red hair. So That's right. Nice. What did we bring? You should have seen Will on the Wednesday We've got Camo here on your guest. We'll let yeah. you reveal him in just a minute. Can bit, we see him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they can, actually. <laughs> Will had a button-down dress shirt on yesterday for your for the Wednesday show. I, I was had, blown away. Uh, it's, it's the first time I've ever oh, seen I had uh, the daughter's school Thanksgiving feast. Bringing an entirely yesterday. new level of class. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I think I'm going to do it more often now. Wow. I liked it. That's what they say whenever you dress nice. You know, It gives you yeah. a, a little bit more confidence whenever you you know, you, you present yourself with more confidence. I got, I got into the hallways here at work, and I got a compliment, and that's never happened before. So well, for any aspect, of so anything. yeah, of anything I've ever done. So <laughs> and they said, it. "Hey, you look nice today." I was like, "That I got a compliment. I got to do this again. There I know what go. it feels like now." <laughs> so, All right. Obviously, you recognize that voice. Connor McQueen is with us. The Red Zone begins this Friday edition, and the honorary guest this time. The honors go to you, Connor, uh, the man that the man that won the prize this time to get none here. other than Shane Trapuca. Punters are people too. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> You back that statement? Oh, I love it. (laughs) uh, Last year, you know what, Kayser had, or maybe it was two years ago, everything runs together. Kayser had the whole Heisman bid thing Mm. going that he he tried to pull off. I mean, you you got any tricks up your sleeve for for your time at A&M? You know. You got pretty good numbers. I mean, uh, mean, we're having a pretty good year. You got a lot of punts inside the 20-yard line. We got a lot of punts inside 20 this year. Maybe you go campaign campus for the right guy. Yeah, I might have to, you know. (laughs) No, Drew, no. Drew kind of started that on his own. I might have to see if somebody <laughs> yeah. will do that for me. I could be a campaign a manager tradition. For it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you ever get to talk to Kayser now that he's with the Chargers? Uh, yeah, I was talking to him NFL? every once in a while. He's doing well. So he's had a last co- uh, good good last couple games. Does he offer advice still? Or? I mean, yeah. Was, <laughs> I mean, you get a lot of advice from him, from him being here the last three years. But yeah. <laughs> uh, usually just talking about it, like stuff that's going on with him at the at Chargers. And yeah. Big time stuff. No, we always yeah. check every week. How big is this show in the locker room? Is it? Are, do guys fight or do they like compete to get on this show? Or is he kind of makes it seem like? It oh, there's brawls. There's yeah. brawls in the locker room. <laughs> yeah, it's a full. It's warfare. Uh, so you, yeah, who'd you beat? <laughs> if you had to have duked it out we with somebody, let's not let's not, let's not right. embarrass any of our team. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't you don't want to <laughs> rub it in the face. Can't throw losers. anybody out of the bus. Right. Yeah, I mean, the lo- there's losers to guys this gotta too. Lick, the guys that don't yeah, get the guys got to lick so. their wounds and you know get ready to come back and fight next week. Yeah. Yeah. Short week next week, so you know, <laughs> they got to be ready to go. Yeah, we may do this on the Tuesday show next <laughs> week, right. so somebody's gonna have to, you're gonna have to bounce back right. one, and somebody's gonna have to be ready. So that's <laughs> true. Connor McQueen and Shane Trapuca in the red zone. Here on Studio 12. Uh, guys, like I said, we look forward to an 11 a.m. kick. Uh, UTSA. Uh, coming off the last two, it's been tough. Uh, the Mississippi schools uh, falling in close games to both, particularly in the last one was a field goal with under a minute left. I'll ask you, Connor, just the mentality of this team as you prepare for UTSA, what have practices and this squad look like to you after the Ole Miss game? I mean, I think there's a lot of – not necessarily frustration, but I mean, I, I, get, I think everyone's a little pissed off mm-hmm. at the fact that the way the last two weeks have panned out, and that you know we've we've kind of in a sense let them slip through our fingertips, and and we've got two games left, and we still have a whole lot to play for in this season, and and you know what happens in these next two games is really going to have a, a major determining factor in where we end up for the postseason play, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's not like we're not playing for anything, so you know we're looking at it as taking care of business this Saturday and then once again on Thanksgiving Day. Mm-hmm. Shane, I wanted to ask you, when this team has always been a team that focus on the next play, work on the next thing, work on the little things. But when you lose a game by one point, you could probably pick out dozens of plays that maybe are executed differently, things go your way. Does a, does a tough, tight loss like that maybe even magnify more to you guys, the emphasis of focusing on every single play? I mean, a tough loss, I mean, it's, it's always going to be – 
a few key plays that are going to turn the tide of the game. But, I mean, for us, it's just we honestly have to put it behind us, forget it, improve on what we had issues with. And uh, and you can't really dwell on those couple things that that put us down. But, um, I mean, we're always looking forward to the next play, the next game, getting ready to – to play a good opponent every week. Yeah, and, that, and that's one of the tough things about, you know, coming off of off of a loss like that, kind of a disheartening loss where you lose in the final minute of the game. It's tough to rebound from that at times, but that's one of the things that we've been focusing on so much throughout the week because you can't let that trickle into Monday and into Tuesday and on later in the week because those are our work days and that's we're just we ha- you have to move on, you have to, you know, shut the door, walk into the next room and, you know, start with the next team because if you let that trickle in it really affects the way that we work and the way we practice and you don't get everything that you can out of the early uh, prep days during those game planning days Mm -hmm. and Connor what do you think about Jake uh, first start of the year now not career he started Mm -hmm. the bowl game but first start he got this season your thoughts on Jake I mean I thought he played his heart out you can really tell just by the way that he plays the game that he he wears everything on his sleeve and and he wanted that game more than anybody else I could say just because He's worked so hard to be in that opportunity, and I think he played. He put us in a great position, and uh, you know we just didn't make enough plays in the second half, and really at the end of the game to win. But I think overall he, his performance was good. It just we just didn't play well enough to win. Mm-hmm. And we were talking on Wednesday's show, and Coach Sumlin has said this before: football is something that goes hand in hand. You know, a defensive line affects its secondary because if they don't get a pass rush, those got to co- these guys have to cover longer. But if they do get a pass rush, it, it makes things easier. You know, offense can help defense. Defense can help offense. When you punt, you can pin somebody deep and give the defense a long mm-hmm. field to work with. How often is that discussed among coaches with you guys? I mean, just because you play on offense with 10 other guys or when you punt, there's 10 other special teams guys out there, it affects – that group that's going to take the oh, field yeah. next yeah. each time. I mean, I definitely think Coach Someone says it every week. I mean, you got to do your job. And, I mean, if you personally do your one job to, to for the benefit of the rest of your, your position group or the defense or offense, special teams-wise, I mean, you can greatly benefit or hurt the rest of the team. I mean, uh, special teams-wise, one punt can lead to uh, long – long field for the other team and we pin somebody inside the 10 yeah that's going to help our defense tremendously so uh special teams wise i mean that's that's huge for us because we don't get that many opportunities and when we do we need to be perfect and um it can definitely trickle down to the rest of the team i mean we have a good punt gets everybody fired up we're ready to go come out play well with a passion or anything so yeah i'm just coach someone says it do your job every week and then it'll 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 um It'll help everybody else around you. No yeah. question. And like you mentioned, you know, pinning pin the up opposing team deep with a, with a good punt. I mean, I think that's one thing that Coach Mazzoni always says from the very first week that he got here. He said something that I'd never heard before, but I liked it, is reserve the right to punt. Yeah. To where it's, you know, don't make bad decisions with the football. Don't, you know, force it into coverage on third down. Don't take long sacks, you know, throw the ball away, mm-hmm. check it down, things like that. You know, we're not necessarily have to force it downfield on third down. Because whenever you have a great punter like Shane, he can pin, he can really flip the field. And I think that's one thing coming off a bunch of the, you know, the offensive, the offensive line, the running backs, receivers, they all immediately go to their position coaches. But a lot of times the quarterbacks will meet with uh, Coach Mazzoni right on the sidelines and will kind of watch the punt. And I think that's one thing that really fires us up, knowing that our defense playing so well at times that whenever we get them pinned inside the 10 or the 15, that that's going to give us good field position coming out for the next series as well. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, it, it, I was almost making fun of it with Matt on Wednesday because these sayings, you know, defense wins championships. Well, a team right. wins championships. Mm-hmm. And you've heard special teams called the third phase. It's not the third phase. It's it's right. it's, it's offense, defense, special teams. It's that's one, the all for form equally. It's yeah. one third of the game. Yeah. That's why it is so important. You know, yeah, so these sayings, right. you know, you hear them all the time. And but. that's where it helps being such a <clears> – <throat> a very good overall special teams unit and that you know like I said Shane will pin them deep but then it, we flip it around and they have to punt a lot of teams aren't going to want to punt to Christian Kirk so yeah. <laughs> they're directional <laughs> kicking they're kicking out of bounds yeah and or whenever they do happen to hang it up there and kick in the middle of the field 
I mean, Christian's going to make something happen back there to where we're starting in good field position. You know, it's just, I mean, we can be backed up. Shane will flip the field, and then that's good field position for us for the next series. And that's a good point because you probably noticed this as a punter. Christian had the two against mm-hmm. New Mexico State and then the one against Mississippi State. seemed like till that game, and you watch this, it was either a sideline punt or something straight up mm-hmm. in the air where you had to fair catch it, and obviously you're noticing it. Definitely, yeah. Like I mean, th- a lot of the – Special teams uh, for other teams, they got to compromise their punts or hit a shorter ball with less hang time uh, so he can't get the ball with space. Or they'll yeah. kick it out of bounds. They'll they'll kick an end-over-end kick. I mean, whatever they can do to keep the ball from getting in his hands. And it's for, for us, it's huge because it's either he gets the ball with space or he gets the ball on a short punt and mm-hmm. puts us in good field yeah. position. So I think that's, that's an extra f- – one or two first downs that us as an offense don't have to worry about getting. You know, it's it's moving the field up, moving, changing field position 10, 15, 20 yards at a time. Mm-hmm. Well, look at what Mississippi State did on kickoffs, kicking the kind of the knuckle balls, throwing Justin yeah. Evans, Keith Ford off in the back. But then you kick one to Justin Evans on Saturday, and he, <laughs> he goes takes it 90. 10 yards from, yeah. from scoring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it is so fascinating. Special teams, the world of it is so fascinating to me. And one of the reasons it is with Texas A&M is because of Jeff Banks, I think. I mean, <laughs> there's uh, – am I right to say there's some vocalness to oh, Jeff, yeah. Jeff Banks? Oh, he's definitely loud. <laughs> but he'll get you going. I mean, yeah. he'll get you doing what you need to be doing, and yeah. he'll, he'll let you know. Yeah. And I mean, I like watching him. You know, oh, yeah. I, I've seen special teams coach, you know, they kind of need the microphones to their voice. I mean, he doesn't really need that. Oh, he, he definitely doesn't. He projects he, yeah, he well. He takes special teams extremely uh, seriously. Yeah. Which is yeah. awesome because, you know, the way that he coaches special teams, he coaches it with such explicit detail. Mm-hmm. And in those meetings, you can't miss anything. And he will not allow you to miss anything with the way that he runs those meetings, with mm. the with how he speaks and how he, he per- portrays his message and how he coaches on the field. There's no opportunity for you not to be paying attention mm-hmm. with how he coaches, which is pretty awesome to watch. Mm-hmm. And I, I I think he's just so intelligent. I've sat in a few of his meetings, special teams-wise, and I don't know if you remember back uh, 2013 when we go to the Chick-fil-A Bowl, got down against Duke, mm-hmm. came back to win the game. I sat in a meeting during the bowl week, and he went over an onside kick Duke was going to do mm-hmm. time and time again. And he mentioned, guys, get all this if they try this out of your head. Right. He said, this this will happen. Mm-hmm. They are going to do this. This is how they're going to do it. Lo and behold, that night they did it. Now, we had a guy drop the ball and they right. recovered the onside. But that's not the point. I mean, he, he had the guy so prepared – it's almost he's a little bit of a prophecy sometimes. He kind of knows what's coming, I think. But <laughs> he's always got us two steps ahead. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, but think about the detail that has to go into prep. You know, Ole Miss comes out of the locker room and they go to kick off and they drop an onside kick. Mm-hmm. Well, the guys just can't assume the ball's going over their head. Right. They have to be ready. Mm-hmm. That front line is critical. They have to be ready just in case. And mm-hmm. Riley Garner right there to pick it up, pick that ball up. Yep, mm-hmm. it's happened to us multiple times. People have tried that dribble middle kick and. You know, it's, it's just a testament to, you know, doing the little things right and doing your job because we've had multiple frontline guys step up and make that play, and we get good field position to start the half. So have you, have you gone over to coach during practices maybe earlier in the season even and kind of said, hey, come on, let me run the ball. Hey, let me, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me throw this time. Let me throw this time. I mean, and can we call the fake punt, coach? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything, but, I mean, <laughs> yeah. let's let's just say that. Uh, <laughs> we got to stay in Coach Banks' ear. We're know? ready for anything, yeah. and he's – and he's uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to go out there and he's a crafty, do whatever he tells he's me a to do. And fellow. Yeah. <laughs> Is it always been punting with you, high school, any different positions? Um, or? High school, I played a uh, little bit of receiver and tight end. Okay. And I kind of just did punting and stuff and kicking just as a secondary thing. And my dad always had me do it just in case maybe. I mean, if you receiver or tight end doesn't work out, you can uh, you can try that. And uh, senior high school, I got rolled up on and uh, blocking off the end uh, – in our preseason scrimmage, and they were like, all right, well, we want you just don't get hurt for punting. We need you to punt. So. Keep hitting the deep balls, man. Yeah. I, I was sad for a couple of days. I got over it, though. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I didn't have to get my head knocked in at practice, I definitely got over it. It was yeah. nice. It's worked out well. Yeah. Yep. So he's yeah. 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 got a little lineage of punters, too. That You know, Shane Leckler, Kayser, who yep. we were just mm-hmm. talking about. And I, mean, I remember Shane Leckler. He was a quarterback when he mm-hmm. got here. You know, and look, he's still punting for the yep. Houston Texans. But uh, before we started with, with Connor and Shane, I had to – 
get all the branches of the family tree down with both these guys because we know Connor's dad played here. But uh, I don't know if we've ever brought this up. Uh, your granddad mm-hmm. coached Texas high school football for a number of years, one right. of the winningest coaches out there. And uh, Bob McQueen, I think Temple, mm-hmm. he was there for a Just, while. Yeah, yeah, over 30 years. Yeah, and so – the football influence started early in the McQueen family. Very, right? very early. So I, mean, I think it was my great grandfather played football at Air Force. My grandfather played football at Tulsa and went on to coach for his entire career. My dad played college football. So, you know, it wasn't that there was pressure, but I mean, there was just my entire life. I grew up knowing football. I mean, I always knew a whole lot more about football than any of the other kids that I hung out with my age, which was, you know, I thought it was kind of. Didn't really think much of it until I got into high school, and you know that knowledge really started paying off. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, it's it's been something that I've always been passionate about, and I think it's something that I'll continue to be passionate about for the rest of my life. And you know, I was talking to Connor about his granddad, your granddad. First of all, we could kind of get down through the tree, but your granddad, uh, Frank Trapuca, played the the quarterback position to somewhat legendary status in the National Football League. <laughs> yeah, the Broncos is who he's with, yep, I he was think. with the Broncos. Yeah. He was the first quarterback ever for the Broncos. Yeah. And uh, he actually went there to be a coach when they started the team, and they went in the preseason games, and the quarterbacks were so bad that the uh, the head coach was like, hey, Frank, just go in there and play quarterback, you know, for the preseason <laughs> game. Give, give the people a show. He went in there, started doing well, and uh, – Ended up being the starting quarterback for three years, so <laughs> that was a pretty good deal on his part. Yeah. Now his name and number in a ring around the stadium. Yeah, yeah. His exactly. number retired, and they just, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, they uh, unveiled the three retired numbers out in the stadium. So he's got a big uh, sign with right next to Floyd Little, John Elway, and then him. Do so. you have any? Do you root for the Broncos maybe because of it, or are they not your team? No, I'm a, I'm a big Jets fan. But Jets? Uh, I mean, I'm not going to root against the Broncos. That's very <laughs> random. Because I was going to say, <laughs> do you know who's going to be at the game Saturday? Who's that? Gary Kubiak. Uh, he's going into the Texas A&M Hall of Fame. Oh, there you go. So, I mean, you know, the head coach, Super Bowl champs right there. Is coming I'm, I'm not going to root against them. I'll say that. I got you. <laughs> but uh, even the uh, – there's the basketball background with your uncle, Kelly Trapuca. Your dad uh, played at Boston College mm-hmm. with Doug Flutie. Yep. Yeah. He's <laughs> – they were uh, they were both quarterbacks there, and he ended up playing. My dad switched over receiver, and it's all history from there. They were uh, he was there for the the hail mary pass, yeah, the famous hail mary pass. That? Yeah, so it was one That's of the awesome. craziest plays he's ever witnessed. And yeah, I can imagine. So wow. <laughs> I'll bet. Yeah, and he probably we were talking. He probably came to Texas A and or may may or may not have made the trip, but Boston College during that time played the Aggies. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure. Yeah, they so. came down south, played a bunch of teams. Would that have been when your dad was here too? Uh, well, I know. That's what I was about to say. My dad was uh, came in and was the same age as Kubiak, as Coach Kubiak. Okay. And so they were they roomed together freshman year, and they played it throughout you know their career here. And my dad was backed up uh, Kubiak, and then uh, switched over to the defensive side of the ball to get a little bit more playing time. Mm-hmm. So uh, he did a little bit of that. So I mean, it was late seventies, early eighties. Yeah, it's, it's, it, Kubiak will be on the field before the game Saturday. You guys are gonna have to. At we'll least get a handshake. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. tell him the ties, things right. like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, all the best to you guys uh, against the Road Runners. Uh, Thanksgiving shortly after that. So Connor will be here next week, but we'll tell you Happy Thanksgiving early. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So, Thank you. Uh, but obviously there'll be business at hand Thanksgiving Day. Of but on to the next. The next one's the Road Runners. All the best in the game on Saturday. Thanks for the time, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you.